Welcome to Creation Radio and TV. I'm your host, Mike Grillo, the president and founder of Creation Training Initiative, a ministry where we train others how to speak and teach on creation. Well, today with us in studio, we have two special guests, uh, Dan and Dave. Make sure I get your set up right there. <laughs> and I'd like to start with Dan. You both of you flew all the way across the country, not just to come to this event, though, did you? Yeah, no. No, you're attending another creation conference. We're here for the uh, Creation Museum with Ken Ham's group and having a great time. We still haven't seen the museum yet, but that's next on the list. And it's a real intensive uh, creation college. We're here for three days, even brought my 12 year old son out. And it's a lot of information, but we're really loving it. Well, so. great, great. And uh, you flew out in the, the same plane, I guess. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, Dan, let me start with you. What is your background? How did you get into creation? Well, that's an interesting question because I have a, a kind of a dual life right now. I, I have a human resource consulting firm of about 50 people. We're in Folsom, California. And through that firm, I, I provide the, the leadership. I'm the president there. But I also testify in court cases as an expert in statistics and research. So that has kind of led me with the research background into being a, a student of creation apologetics. and. I love looking at evidence and assembling ways to look at solid evidence and other ways of looking at ways evidence can be deconstructed when it needs to be deconstructed. So I've kind of brought that passion, that skill set into creation apologetics and we're looking at how we can apply those skills towards helping Christian kids in public school defend their faith as Christians. Okay. And you get called, I think you mentioned you get called into court cases there. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I've been the expert consultant or witness in about 80 different court cases. and. Uh, and I love that field. It's a very controversial field sometimes, but I'll serve as a plaintiff expert or as a defense expert okay. and in the area of statistics or research. And you, you're also an expert in training people to ask good questions. Well, I, I could say the attorneys certainly teach me how okay. to ask good questions, <laughs> yes. So and we do a lot of work with testing and psychometrics. Or too, avoid so. the issue, right? Or avoid the <laughs> yes. issue, yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of questions you get asked when you're going through uh, what they call the, the void daring, the, the expert, or asking the expert the questions to find out his credibility, and you get examined, and you get a direct examination and a cross-examination, and so you have to know what questions you can answer and how to answer them, and how to be light on your feet if you can. Okay, so, I understand. Yeah. Now, Dave, what, what is your background? Well, my background for the last 25 years, I've worked for electric utility, believe it or not, mm -hmm. and I've been in charge of lighting research. The idea is we take emerging technologies and test them with real world people and publish the results. I conduct classes to teach about the technologies. My real passion, however, has been as a Sunday school teacher uh, for the last 10 years. And my mm -hmm. particular uh, area that I just love to teach on is, is creation topics. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, do you, what area do you mainly focus on in the creation ministry? Is it the adults, the students, or youth? or? Well, in the past, it's been focused at the fifth and sixth graders and junior high, but God has really shown me that we really need to reach their parents as well. Yes. And so our new ministry is designed to reach out to the parents and those Christians that are in public schools. Good. Now, um, I, I agree with you. We've got to get the students because they're getting beat up at very early ages right now. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Now, you've, you've done a lot of work, both of you have done a lot of work, and I want to commend you for doing work with the youth. With your tremendous backgrounds, we need more people of your caliber working with youth and know how to talk to the youth and not six levels above their head. Yeah. So that's, you're exactly what we need for our youth today. Now, a question about, for either one of you. The students, how do they respond uh, to evolution, when they're being taught, Christian students, when they're in these public school classrooms, all they're really getting is one side, the evolution side. How are Christian students responding to all of this? Hmm. Well, you know, they, they, they start getting it in fourth and fifth grade, at least in the state of California, they kind of warm them up with the ideas of millions of years. But they don't really introduce evolutionary teaching until the sixth grade, when they teach them that they evolved from ape-like creatures about 200,000 years ago. So, and that's about two to three weeks of worth of training in California schools in sixth grade. Then in seventh grade life science class, they have about 88 pages of evolutionary teaching. No one's really counting, but it's yes, about 88 okay, pages. About 88. <laughs> and, uh, and that's for, for several weeks that goes on in seventh grade where they're introduced to Darwinian theories and radiometric dating. And so they're actually taught to be apologists for the other side of this argument. So it's really fascinating. Then they clinch down the argument 
in the 10th grade when they hit biology class with about 150 pages, at least again in the state of California with yeah. Darwinian evolution teaching. So we find that Christian kids respond in a lot of different ways, but we boiled it down to five different typical responses that happen with kids, ranging from worst to best. The worst thing that we see happen to kids is they're actually talked out of their faith. Sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth graders walking away from their faith because the, the evolution uh, theory as it's presented as fact in school seems to be backed with scientifically credible evidence. So the kids listen to it, they're not provided with the counter argument to it, so it sinks in their minds and their, in their hearts, and they'll walk away from their Christian faith. Going up a little bit from, from that is we find kids that are just apathetic. They think, well, why does it matter? I'm not gonna care. I'm just gonna try to skip fast forward in this information and really not get into it. So. Uh, going up a little bit better from that, in fact, a lot of my, uh, I have four kids that are going through the public school system. My daughter's just now leaving. Uh, she's just graduated last year from high school, but a lot of her friends adopted theistic evolution as a way of dealing with evolutionary theory that's Meaning, taught in class. What do you so, mean by theistic evolution? Yeah, well, well, they grow up in church. They, they love God. They love Jesus. They love the Bible, and they understand that the Bible is a good book. It edifies their life, and and warms their feelings and their, and their mind and everything, but when they're taught hardcore biological evolution in high school, they think, well, maybe just God used evolution okay. as kind of a bridgeway. So God kind of wound up a clock you know, three, million, three billion years ago, kind of let life start evolving here on Earth. And so I'm just going to merge my beliefs in the Bible mm -hmm. and, and high school biology together and become a theistic evolution. In other words, a lot of parts of the Bible then aren't true in that case. Yeah, they, at that point, they're editing the Bible. Yes. They're, they're, be, they're taking man's word over God's word. Um, going up a, better from that would be a kid that holds their own. And fortunately, my kids have been able to do that, but I've had to really weigh into this heavily and spend hours with each of my four kids to make sure that they can internalize biblical creation and biblical science so that they can withstand the strong teaching that comes. But the type of kid that we're going after is an evangelist. That's the top level. We want our kids to go into public schools and learn how to respectfully ask good questions of their teachers and learn how to ask questions of their, their fellow classmates out in the hallway to say, what'd you think about that? that dinosaur talk, or what you think about natural selection and compared to the Bible. And I, I find that kids, you know, if we're, if we're called to be salt and light and you're, you're called to have some of your kids in public school, as some, some parents are, about 90% of Christians are sending their kids to public school, we have to equip them. And our goal is to give our kids, at the, the students that we have through our ministry, at least two hours of creation science training for every hour they're gonna get in the classroom. Wow. And that's just a minimum, just to be able to hold their own or be an evangelist. Now Dave, how do students respond when they're being taught that they evolved from apes? Are they buying into that? And let me add on a second question. Do they know how to defend against that? Hmm. I think most of them, uh, what happens is doubts begin to creep in. And a lot of times they're told that, you know, creation is religion, this is science. And so they learn to kind of separate the Bible and God's word from reality. And so, you know, one of the things that just frustrates me is the parents need to wake up in terms of the seeds of doubt that are being planted. Their students may not bring it up with them. And if they do, a lot of times, unfortunately, they're told, oh, just believe. Um, our generation, in, in my opinion, were the God said so, that settles it. Yes. Not so with these young people. They're being taught to question and to, that there's all kinds of different views and then they're presented with, with what seems to be bulletproof science, and I think it really racks their faith. It, it really disrupts it, but they, the, the scary thing is they may or may not say something at that point. Yes. And a lot yeah. of them, when they're taught creation science, are surprised that there are scientific answers, that mm -hmm. you know, it's not a choice between the Bible and science, that good science actually confirms the Bible. Yeah, yeah. What you said, there. I've had a lot of parents come to me and talk about their son or daughter who they raised in the church, mm -hmm. went off to a secular university, and now won't even speak to the parents anymore. They're yeah. complete evolutionists at this point. They weren't prepared, and that's why we need to get to the parents to get them trained. We need to get to church leaders, get them trained, but we also have to make sure we don't forget the students where they're at right now. And, you know, the, yeah. the thing about that, too, is, you know, studies have shown that the doubts begin to creep in at fourth and fifth grade. So a lot of the times we'll think if we address this just as they're seniors or juniors in high school, that that's adequate. It really isn't. We got to start a lot sooner and recognize yes. the damage and the doubt that's being sown. Yes, yeah. especially with topics like dinosaurs. Absolutely. They get that at first grade. Yeah, Absolutely. they sure do. Yeah. Now you made a mention there, and, and I want to commend you for students ask 
questions in a respectful manner in the classroom. I really mm -hmm. appreciate that because I won't come to a student's defense if they attack a teacher in the classroom. They have to remember that the teacher is the authority and they're under that authority regardless of what the teacher teaches. Yeah. But they need to know how to ask the good questions. That's true and actually that's one of the challenges with, with trying to have a kid in public school because they're conditioned from kindergarten that teachers are the authority figure and what they say is, is truth and credible and you're going to be graded on what they say and if you don't get good grades then the parents going to come down with some with some enforcement so they're really conditioned to listen to the teacher as a as a fountain of truth but now they're being pulled out of fourth fifth and sixth grade by the parents saying well you can only believe about what 90 percent of your teachers say so let me teach you the other part so that's a that's a new thing to the kids yeah. too but it's an important thing to teach yeah, the kids. And, uh, you said another good part what the teachers are saying in there in biology or geology classrooms things it's not all false no the science yeah. is good it's just when they get to origins yeah. that is suspect or can be dreadfully wrong there's when you own, think about yeah. it um, <clears throat> how do you kill a rat you know if you put 100 percent poison out the rat knows better and won't touch it but if you mix in one percent poison with food that the rat likes you know, and that's the way this works is we've got truth mixed in with, with lies and false teachings. And without teaching them discernment, it's really hard to tell what's, you know, which Great is analogy. which. analogy. Excellent analogy. Yeah. Now, Dan, you mentioned something else about uh, uh, millions of years. Is it important for our students and us also to hold to a young earth? Is, is that an important issue or is it just kind of a side issue here? Well, I think if you just start from the requirement of a teacher from the Bible, it says teachers will be held to a higher level of accountability. And I don't want to stand up in front of a thousand kids and say, well, kids, when it comes to dinosaurs or origins or where the universe came from, where the earth came from, you can believe in day age or old earth or the gap theory or whatever. I want to be able to be held accountable by God for opening his holy scriptures and treating his word with the honor it deserves to say, kids, this is what it said. This is the most natural reading of it. I mean, even if you look at Exodus 20, 11, the six day creation week is in the fourth commandment. And that's an area of scripture that the Lord wrote with his own hand. So who are we to think we're going to interpret that through the lens of science as we see that secular science puts to us? So. It, it, it's a dreadful thought to stand before the, the creator, the living God, mm -hmm. and him look at you and say, why didn't you trust my word? There's yeah. a lot of church leaders out there who are going to be in that position because they think, well, it doesn't matter or it's too divisive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think a lot the of cross the... is divisive. Yeah. Yes. I, I think a lot of the pastors are intimidated yes. by what they see is, you know, they have to find a way to try to reconcile science mm -hmm. with the Word of God. And so they end up with these, these uh, you know, com compromises to try to explain it all. And I think a lot of them aren't aware of just how yes. fragile the evidence mm -hmm. is and how it is so subjective. And by helping them understand that, I, I think it, mm -hmm. we have to make sure that we do that because the Bible is very clear on young earth, yes. in my opinion. Yeah. Is we have all the teachers we need out there. Mm -hmm. They're just mm -hmm. not trained. So the mm -hmm. problem now I see is going back to our Christian universities, they're not doing their job, are they? Mm -hmm. They're not training our youth pastors for the battle. They're not training pastors to be confident in God's word. There's something missing yeah. from their education there in the universities. Well, Mike, you almost have to look at a lot of their, their positions are what's in it for me and is it an issue that really matters? And I've raised four kids, uh, and four or five years ago, I wasn't certain on my position on origins until I locked in four or five years ago and said, oh my gosh, the Bible is very clear on this, and there's a ton of evidence that supports a young earth. Then I started training my kids rigorously in that fashion, and there has been a notable response and a notable difference with my kids when they can look to a dad and a mom to say, look, you can open this Bible, and from the first page to the last page, you can trust it as it's written. This is where you came from. This is how God created the world. There's a tremendous rooting that happens to these kids where they get grounded opposed to some parents that say, well, Johnny, I don't know where the dinosaurs came right. from and I don't know of how, how long ago. And if you look at distant starlight, it could mean millions of years or it could mean this or it could mean that. It's almost like it creates an unstable foundation for the kids to be raised in. Mm -hmm. Whereas I've seen a, a reaction and a change with my own kids when I can pull them aside and teach them, this is God's word, it's the authority by which you should live your life. You can put your roots in this and you can trust this over man's word. It's an incredible uh, new DNA that's been entered into our family since I've made that commitment. I like that. We, the ministries out there like Answers in Genesis, mm -hmm. the Institute for Creation Research, Creation Ministries International, they're all getting this information out. 
Yeah. And what, what makes your ministry a little bit different? I think you've given us some of the idea there is you're taking your knowledge and pouring it into your children. In other words, it requires true. you to have yeah, a lot of knowledge right. to be the teacher of this. Yeah. Is that one of the things you see as a difference that we've got to get to these parents so yeah. they know enough to transfer it down? I see it yeah. as two things. First, we need to make the families and the parents aware of this is important. So we got an awareness. You know, what's happening, yeah. you know, kind of a wake-up call and that good, in, good science is available, good information is out there. And then our approach is to take from the world of wonderful researchers out there and you know, funnel it on down to target it specifically for what's being taught in public schools so that they have credible answers, can ask good questions, and at the end of the day, be confident in the Word of God. That's our sole purpose here is it is all about you know, trusting Jesus and all that, but the foundation for where we learn everything about Jesus is under attack. It's, it's like mm -hmm. that verse in scripture, uh, train up a child in the way they should go, when they're old they'll not depart from it. Mm -hmm. That seems to be not happening in a lot of Christian yeah. homes today. Yeah. We're relying on the churches to do the teaching, but unfortunately people in the church haven't been trained. That's true. So we really <clears> lack <throat> training grounds, don't we? We definitely yeah. do. And then the other thing is, you know, having served as a Sunday school teacher for 10 years, one thing I saw is even if you get the church leaders to buy into allowing you to tackle these subjects, inevitably what happens is some of the parents who aren't at the training of the class may complain because they don't understand, they don't have the training themselves. And so what you end up with is uh, complaints coming in. And you know, it, it really boils down to, is this worth the conflict? Is this an important subject and everything? So that's why it's so critical to reach the parents as well as yes. the church leaders. Mm -hmm. If you have the support of the parents, then the church leaders will come in alongside of you with the yeah. effort. Excellent, I like mm -hmm. that. Um, we're trying to get all the different issues in there. It's not just one area, it's, it's all throughout Across Christianity. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. really the goal of our website is, is what we've designed it to do is we're taking out radio ads that should be playing in the same weeks in which evolution is going to be taught in public schools okay. in California. The parents will hear on the radio waves, go to our website, just genesisapologetics.com. Okay. Say that actually, one again. Uh, Gen Say it real. Yeah, genesisapologetics.com. Okay. And uh, just those two words, Genesis Apologetics, put it together. And uh, they can go to the website and they can cl actually click on their son or daughter's textbook and it will show them the evolution teaching that their kids are being taught in school. What a resource. Along with pre-digested videos and training that they can look at that should be done in a half an hour per topic so they can easily detune their kids of what they're being taught in public school. Now, you've also written a book on this issue, haven't you? Yeah, I started out by surveying about 24 uh, Christian kids in public high school and I said that had already completed their biology class because I knew by then there were about 150 pages of evolution teaching in their biology class. And I provided them with a list of about 12 or 13 different topics that are evolutionary in nature that are being taught to them. And I said, I want you guys to rank order these different topics by how they're damaging your faith, about how they're, they're disintegrating and eroding your faith and trust in the Bible and in, in the Lord. I took those survey results and chose the top eight topics. And then I hired a, a really a great a crack shot team of creation scientists around the country to write each of the different chapters. And so I, we distill those chapters down. It's about a 200 page book, but it's a great thing to have your high school student read before they enter high school biology. And I've got the book and it's an easy to read book. Great. It flows nice. Now, how can they get a hold of that book? Because I, I highly recommend that book for your high school students. I think even junior hires could read a lot of this. Absolutely, if they want a hard copy, they can order it through our website. It's also on amazon.com. Or actually, because we're doing this as, just by way of a ministry, you can download the whole book for free as a PDF on our website. Okay. So, If you like to read from computers. Yeah, <laughs> or you can print it out. So, yeah. yeah. I have Certainly. a hard time marketing up my screen when I, I want to highlight something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> no. true, yeah. The other uh, resource that we're putting together, it's a, it's a new effort, but we have what's called Fast Facts. And these are yeah. one or two page fact sheets on subjects like Lucy, Nebraska Man, uh, Age of the Earth, you know, different topics. And the idea is to condense a whole bunch of research down into something that's easy to read in one or two pages. Now you mentioned yeah, the age so. of the Earth. Is, is there good scientific evidence for a young Earth? There actually is. And, and one of the interesting, uh, one of the things I, I like to tell people is when it comes to radiometric dating and you know, all the indicators, there are so many conflicts within that methodology that I like to tell people, using that methodology, we don't know a thing about the age of the Earth because there's so many contradictory you know, uh, indicators. For example, 
some of them will say that the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. And then you have things like carbon-14 in coal and diamonds that indicates that it can't be more than 100,000. These mm -hmm. obviously can't coexist, but they do, which means that things were not the way, you know, things that today were not the way that they were at one time. But so, I've seen the textbooks. They don't put the fact that we're finding carbon-14 and coal and diamonds in the textbook. They just kind of censor that information out, don't they? And, and when I've asked that question, I've been told, well, we don't want to confuse the children. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's okay just to give them one side of the story, but... So we really shouldn't be embarrassed <laughs> when the Bible teaches the Earth is only about 6,000 years old. We really should Because the scientific evidence does support that. You know, Mike, and that's how I kind of bring my, my, my work experience with this. The, one of the first questions I'm asked when I sit down for a deposition or to testify in a court case when the stakes are, are big and people's jobs are at stake, uh, the, one of the first questions the attorney will ask me is, Dr. Biddle, what are your assumptions about your analyses? That's the first mm -hmm. thing they'll ask me. And that question has not been asked of the evidence in historical science. What are your assumptions? So we, we can, you know, 90% plus of the kids' textbooks in, in the state of California are really well done when it comes to observational science. They're clear in the way they stack the knowledge is great and it's very well put out in pictures and graphs and all kinds of good stuff, but then they'll shift from observational science and muddle it with historical inferences and historical sciences that are fraught with assumptions and assumptions that can't be proven and in, sadly in most cases assumptions that have been proven to be false. So there's this kind of broad scale information being put out when it comes to evolution teaching and the kids need to be taught that it's not true. And junior hires can understand this. Yes, yeah. can. You know, we, we can even teach this in churches too, can't we? We can teach the science in church because yeah. I always go back to who's the creator of all the scientific principles? Yeah, God did. Yeah. So we can bring him in. It tells us he's given us all the evidence. Why not use it in the church? Yeah, But absolutely. there again, we've got to get people trained, don't we? And that's where you come in, helping train others. That's our, our passion, yeah. But I do have one more, another question okay. on this young earth issue. Why is it, and I know people are out there thinking, why is the age of the earth even an important issue? The, the, the number one reason in my mind is that if you try to shoehorn millions of years into the Bible, what you end up with is death before sin. You know, the chronology, uh, Explain chronologies that, Explain that, that lead me. back okay. to Jesus, and if you look at all the way back to Adam, they're pretty clear in that the earth is somewhere 6,000 years old. So where would you fit in millions of years? And the answer is you'd have to fit it in before Adam. And from the fossil record, we see a record of death and violence and disease and all of these things which, A, when God finished the six day creation, he said, it's good. So by that statement, that was saying that God is looking at all of this, this death and destruction and disease and saying it's good, which I guess, you know, looking at the, the God that I worship, he would never say anything like that. Yeah, good to God means it's perfect for God to sit back in, in Genesis one thirty one and look at his whole creation after all six days were done and finished and he capped off his creation week with by the creation of man. He says, it's good. He so wasn't he, talking about all that other stuff folded in there. So if, yeah. uh, if we had millions of years, God just called death, decay, and disease, and destruction very good. Absolutely. Even good. worse, it makes God the cause of those yes. things. So and that's not, that's not the case. I mean... God said to Adam and Eve, if you, tr if you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. And they chose to eat the fruit, bring in the curse of sin into their lives, and stuff started dying after that. So uh, we certainly can't make God the cause of death, disease, and suffering. So this is a very important issue. One, God would have called death and decay very good. And secondly, it puts death before sin, which undermines the entire gospel of Jesus Christ now. Yeah. We, we don't have a foundation for the gospel anymore, you which don't. ruins our evangelism. And it's a there, direct yeah. assassination on the character of God. Yes. You know, I, I have the, I'd like to talk to people that are, are Christians that want to use, say, well, could God have used of evolution? And if you look at his character, the answer is no. Right. Because evolution is this painful, horrible process to where all these, you know, supposed things evolve into the next one and they die in the process. Yes. And so you have all of these problems. And if God had to use that, that's not the God, God of the Bible. God is smart and he's loving and he would never use a, a process such as that to create. Excellent. Yeah. I've got one more thing here for you. Mm -hmm. One more thing. Uh, you've used this, this term with, with me. Mm -hmm. And I've got to find out what it means now. Oh, okay. Cognitive dissonance. Okay. Did I even pronounce that oh. right? <laughs> yeah, you sure did. Well, real simply, it's, it's a term from, from uh, the study of psychology, cognitive dissonance. And it's, what, it's exactly what I'm observing 
happen to Christian kids now that are going to public school. Kids are going in there and they're getting blindsided because they're raised in a Christian home. They grew up hearing Bible stories and learn about the Bible, but then they hit sixth grade world history class where they taught, they're taught that they have evolved from ape-like creatures over 200,000 years ago. And they're put up pictures of the succession of man, the march of, of man, if they will, leading from this type of, a, of an early man to this next one, the next one, the next one, all the way up to the humans that we are today. And many kids dismiss it, but to almost all the Christian kids, there's this underlying well, a surge that happens in their mind and their thinking and their conscience about, wow, how could this, the Bible, and credible evolution exist at the same time? That's what cognitive dissonance is, is how can this and this exist in my reality that I construct at the same time? And it gets worse in junior high and then in high school when they're presented more evidence of evolution. And they get conflicted and they get stressed and they, they act out in all kinds of different ways. But a lot of that, what's going on is this is surge, this well that's coming up of how can my Lord, my Savior, the Bible that I want to trust exist at the same time evolution seems like it's a clear fact and it creates a lot of stress in their lives in a lot of ways it kind of acts out in different ways that are, aren't productive and by anyone's account and now i understand it okay, okay. good anything to add to that or that uh, i think you've nailed it okay you know, good I, again, i want to get I, back I just... to um, again let's get back to your website and okay. i want to talk a little bit about that book how people can get a hold of it what is again your website GenesisApologetics.com. GenesisApologetics.com. And what's the title of your book? Uh, Creation versus Evolution, What They Don't Want You to Know in Biology Class. Good, good. And again, how can they get a hold of that book? Uh, they can get a hard copy from us by, by just sending an, an, an email. It's a suggested $10 donation. Uh, it's re available at retail on Amazon.com. Or they can download uh, in many of the chapters on our website or the whole book from the website if they want excellent, a PDF. Excellent. And I highly recommend that book. It is excellent for junior hires, high school students, college students, and parents. Get that book yeah. and read it. You'll see what's happening in the public school systems so they don't get this um, idea of how do I reconcile evolution with God's Word. There is no reconciliation there. They are opposites. One is true. The other one is false. Well, I want to right. thank you very much, Dan. Dave, do you have anything final you want to say? I have one more. One yeah. more. Uh, one of the other things that we're willing to offer are free workshops and presentations. Okay. You can request that through our website. We have different topics that we specialize in, if you will, primarily mm -hmm. ape man, the flood, can you trust the Bible, and dinosaurs, of course. And, yeah. But we are also open to special requests as long as they're related to the Bible or to creation. And I happen yeah. to know you're both excellent teachers because I was out in <laughs> California not too long ago and we co-taught a basic creation training class fun. together yeah. and two great teachers on this right. issue of creation evolution Thank you. highly recommend it and go to their website and find out how to get that book I want to thank all of you out there and God bless you if these lessons had been a blessing to you you might consider financially supporting the ministry of creation training initiative you can do this by going to our website creationtraining.org. Again, that's creationtraining.org. Your tax-deductible donation of just $20, $50 or more a month, or a one-time gift of any amount will make you an education partner in building an army of Christian educators who can teach the biblical account of creation and train others to be able to defend their faith and be biblically faithful to God's Word as it states in 1 Peter 3.15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear.